that kind of just makes the whole system pointless. So we have to start somewhere, but the point is to really create this database because we have so many great faculty and outside sources um, connected to the university, and we want to really maximize on the connections and networking that we do have available mm -hmm. to us to work with students and really get some different perspectives on some topics that we're kind of talking about in class. Um, and then also, so going back to um, our journey map, once the collaborator has said yes and we put them into CRM, um, then we reach out to the cohort and give them a biography um, and help with scheduling options. The cohort responds, ideally, you know, in a decent amount of time. And then um, we connect the collaborator and the cohort. And we also, um, and I think this is an important step to know, we create the first meeting time. So like the first meeting time is organized by us um, so that it's just like all easier. It, like it shouldn't be a constant, because sometimes when you're doing meetings, it just becomes like a constant back and forth. If we have funding, maybe your first talk is on that. Yeah. <laughs> and essentially, so oh, yeah. the students that come behind us, this is the service, uh, and each of us, our role in helping facilitate this process, will each take on a specific uh, role. So, like, I will handle the finances, and then the student and collaborator uh, in person interactions, and then Emily is going to be the email manager, Rosemary's the project, project manager, and Taylor. So by each taking on a specific task, we make sure that this is a seamless process. Um, and I think uh, kind of going forward and what the work that we have to do ahead is just kind of making sure that we acknowledge each of the steps that are going to be coming, um, each of the touch points that we have with students and collaborators, um, and just making sure that, again, it's a seamless process. Yeah, the idea is really to just bring a new perspective um, to our design projects. Like, I know when Cindy was in here specifically, I was thinking not so much like in a pharmaceutical sense, like how are we gonna design this trial, but I was really, it made me think more of the patient and like personal, and I feel like getting that dynamic and getting um, different sides of the story is really important in design, and I feel like it'll just increase the effectiveness and efficiency of um, the design projects that we create. Because um, we're really trying to think outside the box. So, And yeah. uh, finally, if this were um, to like go forward and then go through a couple iterations, it could be something that would then be used by um, like the greater Georgetown community. So it's meant to start within this class, but then um, as we work on it, it's something that could go a lot farther. Do you guys understand the um, blueprint here? Can't really see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have it drawn. There. Oh, 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 it's you guys so on the back. We had one to make print out. Do you guys have emails that request system receives? Zoom in on this one. File. Do you understand the different lines? Um, the different sections? Our group is at top level, and that will be you as the user. What are you getting out of this? The middle is our work. That's where we're all, we all have a task, we all have a purpose, and that's where the service is running. That's where we're doing the work for connecting the cohort and students with the outside collaborator, which is at that bottom um, section. And that's the collaborator, that's the greater community that we're really trying to get a network and connection out of. That's where we're trying to reach out, get some different people in different fields, um, and that will probably, or will, be through Georgetown professors, faculty, we want to be from different departments, um, and they don't necessarily need to be faculty. Alumni, too, and there's a huge alumni network, I'm sure, would be interested in participating. And just another thing that's important to point out about the chart is the visible line. Um, we created that because the student is going to see all the interactions in the cohort group, but then past the visible line, the, the operations are not going to um, and that was the same for the collaborators. Um, and that's just, it's, wait, I didn't get kind of called like the line of visibility and the line of like internal work that we're gonna have to do. Yeah. So
So this is visible line and that's invisible line? They're supposed to be, they're supposed to be both visible lines. Ah. <laughs> if you're not flying behind this, this is the, this is the Do you, so, sorry, hold on a second. Do you, this group, you see a yeah. relationship to what you're doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, um, should we explain? Anyways, okay, so this is kind of like similar to what we're doing, except for um, instead of, I guess you guys are doing kind of like a service, we're looking to pair students up with like mentors, not mentors, but um, kind of like research well, subjects. Research participants, um, yeah. but, but kind of in, a, in an attempt to kind of study them um, as opposed to getting help mm -hmm. from them. Um, but this service could fit in to the piece of like the factual matching. Finding that, yeah. I mean, I think people really struggle with like of collaborators would only like I feel like improve the variation yeah. and um, yeah, I think that would be great. Um, maybe like the initial matching for you guys for researching could be done through this. Um, it would probably be a little bit different about the request from from our service, like, it would probably be a little bit more um, intensive for, like, to have, like, are you guys doing, like, a shadowing is what I'm getting, like, a shadowing program, yeah, essentially. Yeah, um, but, yeah, I, I think the matching would help. It must be good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, I know you guys mentioned, like, finances, someone's, like, the head of finances. Is someone in charge for this service, or, like, Um, in theory, like, the students running it would be paid, like, a small okay. amount, like, a TA position. Um, but and that's the, not like I don't think that's significant. The networking, the people who we would be reaching out to as collaborators, um, like the travel, at, yeah. yeah, travel Which expenses. But at this point in time, we would um, kind of be asking it as a goodness of their own <laughs> part kind of thing. So what are you doing <laughs> with the ten thousand dollars mostly? Um. Oh, okay. Who are the students that are doing it? What? Who are the students that are doing it? Go for it. Paying ourselves. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're, we still have to work out some of those financial things. Like, like we, we are but expecting us to like, take a lot of time.
we're not like getting in the way. I think a lot of the things that you're talking about have to do with the design process, and we're not getting in the way of the design process. We're simply enhancing it, and like those learning tools that you get from um, from becoming involved with a collaborator and like reaching out to them, you're still going to be able to do, you know, like post the first meeting. We're simply mm -hmm. streamlining it and allowing you to then have more time to work on projects, and we want these projects to be even better, so we're not going to give you access. Right, so that raises another like question about how fast you guys can do this. I mean, because like some of our design projects took a week. So yeah. like how fast well, like, we you need to so be able to connect someone to a collaborator. Yeah, so we've talked a bit about this with Arjun, and we would um, talk ahead of time. So a lot of times in this class, like, we didn't know really what was going on or like what the projects were, but because we'd be setting up this whole system, like, we would know what the projects are. We would know your syllabus. We would know what's coming. And we would do the background work in order for, like we're basically, part of our job is basically to anticipate your email, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, you know, if, if, if this were like become a real thing, that's like part of the job. Yeah. Another like, I guess, positive to like organizing the first meeting, um, it's just, you want to, I guess, approach the collaborator, especially for the first time, like from an organized service, I feel like that might come off better to collaborators and be a little bit more, um, excited to join. And I think after that, you guys have still the responsibility of like communicating with them to meet later. And um, I don't think you'll be missing out on any skills gained from um, setting up the meeting and collaborating. Yes, people over here. Yes. Um, so if I got this right, you guys are going to pick if we like need a collaborator. No. So you're going to tell us when you need a collaborator, but we're going to anticipate it by looking at the syllabus and having discussions with Maggie and Arjun ahead of time. Uh, okay, I'm not, I can't see that one there, but this one definitely, or at least what I understood was that you guys are going to decide, we had to say, oh, we need a collaborator for this thing, and you would pick, you would decide what if and who that collaborator would be. Not if, just the who. Just who. So, and you would be, so that to me doesn't make sense. It's like, we should have some sort of a contact sheet of like, I think Jesse had mentioned that, so that all, as the four of us who are working on this project, who know what we want, why can't we have access to like the mentor or the person that we'd like to have? And why couldn't we just send the emails? Because this seems like, a, like there's nothing wrong, and I think a lot of professors and like, in professional people do that, where there's literally an email that's sent to two people from one person. So say we wanted to talk to Spencer, like Maggie would send an email linking us with Spencer, and that itself means that it's not just coming from like me, not that it's coming from like Maggie connecting us. Right. So um, Maggie, 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 can I, can I yeah. join in collaboratively? Yeah. Um, uh, I love this idea so much. Uh, I, I want to make sure everybody is I, be as candid and all that kind of stuff. Great, but remember we're also collaborating. So you're pressing hard on the ideas, but also some of it is growing it. So I could imagine picking up on Nante's point. Um, when you said the helping with the first meet, I thought of that. Um, it's just lunch dating service that you read about on the airplane. That's the only knowledge I have of it. I've never used the service. <laughs> and at, at any rate, so it could be not just that here's the person you do, but we found three people from our database that might be good matches for you, let us tell you more about them. Here's the bio, but also why we thought, you know, you can well, read yeah, And also, would be sorry, great. Um, as we said earlier, this is a minimum viable product. So like, we're not showing you every single step um, as we go along the final fit. And one of our steps um, that we didn't show you, which is like totally on us, is that um, we interview each team in class or each cohort and ask them like, what are your needs? like. How do you work? What type of person do you want? Do you want someone who talks a lot? Do you want someone who does it? Like, it's matchmaking. Like, it, yeah, it's, I mean, we're like kind of a dating service. That's, that's like the coffee. point here, though. It's a service, it's an experience, and not necessarily would we have contact to these. That's the main purpose, also, is that it's not something you can throw on a contact sheet because it's a building network. Can I, can I have one other um, collaborative uh, suggestion? Um, so I wonder if another touch point could be um, going back and asking the users, in this case the students, how was that for you? 
Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. That was, we did discuss that was the point. Yeah. because we did quality discuss control. That. So you know, maybe I come up with an idea of somebody that I kind of heard might be fun for some students like them, and then people say, lame. Okay. Did you put that on there? Can we modify? Yeah, we actually had it on there. We had it on there. We wanted to. Call it. Follow up? Troubleshoot a little bit more of how we could get that information back. Okay. We were thinking like either, I mean, I feel like the survey kind of constrains people. We struggled with how to because we don't want to. We don't want to be like, oh, make sure you email us back. So we need to find a way to be not annoying about it, um, but definitely get the information so we can add this to their bio about what type of worker they are, what type of collaborator they are, and. We want to build a database of useful people, not like we want to be able to rule, not necessarily rule out because I feel like that's rude. I don't like that word. But like, <laughs> we just don't tell. Them. Yeah, we yeah. just <laughs> want to maybe see them less. So, um, <laughs> um, yeah, we we definitely talked about that and thought that was an important point because um, the whole process is going to be like in a few years we're going to have this huge database of people that we can access and like um, maybe people you wouldn't even think to or ask about for a project and like we kind of want to be thinking ahead and be like, oh, well this person does this and you might not be thinking about them directly for a philosophy or bioethic related issue, but they have this experience that might help. Um, so that's kind of the point. We, don't, we didn't want it to be a generic contact sheet because anyone can make an address book and put their employee like and their job and their um, field. So we wanted it to be a little bit more specific and personal, and we thought that that would be more helpful. Wait, go over here. I'm just gonna say, like, I understand that people would see this as like a contact sheet, but what I, like, when I look back in the course when you said this, like, I think this totally makes sense because when you have crits and like people are developing comic books and they've never done it before, having somebody who says, oh, we can go find someone who is associated with the school that knows knowledge of like comic books and come and help you, or like with the informed consent, like knowing someone who writes like legal documents and like the very specific issues that really get to the legal consent, like I think that would be huge and like we saw with preeclampsia, I think none of us really got what it was or like the real magnitude of it until we had someone come in. I think the specificity of what you're doing, where like someone says like, we have a problem and it's on this, that's what like really separates from a contact sheet because like if I flip through a contact sheet, like if you have a lot of contacts, like you don't realize, you couldn't find if you know like some teacher here did a research paper so at some point on a topic that's related to you and like they can come in and work with you on it. That would be really cool and help you develop stuff. It's not just the existing, so how I've seen it, it's not, not just the existing context either. Um, we, like the, your faculty, like Maggie and Spencer, the existing collaborators too, have more ability to, like, are more likely to get a response to just cold calling people. So if you want to contact someone, or like someone that we know that knows someone else. And so for, it seems recruit, like taking off a lot of, yeah, and like using the existing resources that the university, like alumni, the alumni association president who we were just about to meet with, like in the coming week or so, to talk about this, even before you get to this, like the, uh, and other resources on campus that have connections, have networks, to centralize that, that's what is most useful for our side that we're after. Rachel, um, I was wondering, what would happen if you ended up in a situation where, because you guys were like preemptively contacting people, if you contacted someone, um, especially someone who's out of town, and you like completely prepared them for this, and then no group utilized them? What would you do? It just seems like the like that you would get them involved in the process, and then they would like kind of fall out. If yeah. No, no I don't think we would question. ever schedule a definite date without them without them having a specific need. But like creating a database so we know their schedule or like their level of commitment. So like either if we want to have them in the future, or if it's sometimes it would be someone calling on request for like the next week or in the next two weeks if you have a design project coming up. So like, in theory, we would have more information on the timeline, and I would never commit someone coming in. Well, I didn't mean commit as much as just like getting them involved in it, and like getting them excited about yeah, no. working as a collaborator, and then never having a group to work with them. Like, yeah, no, you make a really good point, and I think 
that just really has to do with how you make the initial contact. Yeah. So maybe that means that the first time you contact them, you simply say, you know, we are running this innovative class where we're changing Georgetown curriculum, et cetera, et cetera. And we are wondering if you, as an alum who cares about Georgetown, if this is something that you would ever be interested in in the future. So you keep it broad, and then you kind of take it a step further as it goes forward. Um, I think that's really just about wording emails correctly, but that's a point I need to think about. And that's, yeah, that's a really good point. It's part of the studio model, too, though, like, is to have a shared physical space and, like, that to track that you don't have to do much but come in to work, right? Um, it's the idea that, like, hopefully, collaborators, you wouldn't be able to, like, almost ad hoc or just, like, throw people in to a situation and they could just embed the team and hang out and go to the Yeah, no, I just wanted to comment that I think it's, I, like, like a glow, I guess. Like, I think it's really cool, um, especially because, like, this past week, so you'll hear about our project soon, but, like, mm -hmm. the number of emails I sent like, went unanswered because, like, I'm just yeah. a random Georgetown student yeah. who's like, hey, I'm doing a project. Your group, so, like, your group would have loved it. Yeah, it's like, no <laughs> one cares. So, yeah. like, I think having, like, a, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, there are busy people with busy like, lives. Even, like, like, running something with a service or, like, something that's established, I think, right. creates a first impression that's, like, really important. And, I mean, one of the coolest things I, I'm really excited about this service is that I feel like we could get people that are so unique that like they will bring something so interesting to the design project and I mean they don't have to be an expert at anything but like for example my mom does clinical trials she like organizes them and she was a nurse previously it just gives you such a different perspective of like how someone would go about doing that and I feel like adding that to a design is just like really because that's what interesting. I've gotten the most value out of yeah. this course is I've worked with students now who I come from a nursing studies background like I think very clinically and very like put myself in the patient's position because that's what I study <laughs> but working with actually in finance and Emily on more like management type things and policy and just business and English background that's where I've learned the most there's so many personal pieces and like we got lucky, like, lucked out with our group by having so many different, like, backgrounds. But that's, like, one of the most important parts. And I feel like trying to bring in as many different aspects of people, cultures, industries, like, I think that is what's going to make a really, really good design product. Uh, yeah. Uh, for one, I would never help email people and help you ever. Uh, some people are To, um, you said like they, they can either come in or they can like be an email, answer questions and stuff like that. I don't know if you guys said this, but I think it'd be cool. You might have said it to make like a like under each person's bio or something like make like a, like start a database of like questions they answer. Yeah. Like build it up or like or even just like yeah. log yeah. time they went into class and like what they talked about. Yeah. Like, yeah. That would be like a running law. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, do the like collaborators like preferences like are they accounted for also like for example like I know that design groups and like oh like we're doing like a free time deal like thing um can be like so we would like um someone in this field but like right. do the collaborators can they also be like oh yeah like I would strongly prefer like not to work with like. That are working on this kind of project. Yeah, well, <laughs> these kind of people. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole point of the database is like to really keep track of those sort of things, so we're not um, really like tripping over ourselves asking the same questions over and over again. But also that they're doing something that they're interested in and also want to participate in. Like we want to feel like I, I don't have an example of this, but like come in for this that you know nothing about. I mean, we're trying really trying to use a system to tailor like people's skills and then apply that to the needs of the. Yeah, it's also important to like take into account group dynamics because I've now been in two different groups mm -hmm. and I think we like both times had like great experiences but we work completely differently. And that's just like so I think that's another important part that goes beyond like a call sheet is you need to know how collaborators also how the collaborator wants to work. Right? So we're almost out of time and I do want to sorry, you know. I'm going to pull right now. I want to say a couple of other things. Um, so I, I think this is an incredibly valuable and deeply thought out, you guys. I've really thought about this. And part of what I love about it is it would both streamline 
And so we need better infrastructure if we're gonna do studio-based stuff, right? So you're talking infrastructure, and then you're also talking building community. And community, not just between entities at Georgetown, like me and somebody I've never, a faculty member I've never met, now I will, but outside Georgetown too. Alum are also people you wanna network with, they're sources of new jobs for you, right? And so I would really encourage the, the post, you know, a, a, as you're keeping a log of how it went, I love what you're saying, but you don't want to be spamming and intrusive on either side, but find, designing a way to have gentle connect backs, so maybe it's not every day, right? For both the students, how'd that go? Are you glad you had the meeting? Was it, you know, and you'll, you'll figure out ways to do it. And also to the collaborator, Yeah. okay? Because part of what I think we should be doing is cultivating relationships for ethics lab. And so my last comment is think of the thank yous. So I think part of the service should be hand delivering fucking brownies. <laughs> I'm really serious. When I first became director, we had a budget crisis, and I I took people wine and brownies, and it nice. I we got partners all over the university, now, right? Because all it takes is one brownie, and they love you forever. <laughs> and other faculty and, and and alums and business people and love getting a chance to connect with the next generation, especially if they're bringing brownies. And wine. And wine. <laughs> well, they can't touch the wine. They can't do it. Okay. <laughs>